Now we talk about social in a mobile age because we actually got introduced to social by Tom. Anybody know what I'm talking about when I say Tom? Imagine social. MySpace, there we go. We had our top eight friends, right? Uh, we were all, everyone got uh, to be friends with Tom right away. Uh, and, in a, and in many ways, that was sort of the first big social media platform. A lot of things have changed <laughs> since then. We have cell phones now, cell phones that are not just flip phones, except for you back there. Um, we have a lot of cool features. I mean, the, the technology in our pocket, guys, is, is more than we used to get to the moon, right? Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard that before. Uh, and it's not just double, it's not just triple, it's hundreds of times more powerful than the technology we used to get to the moon. Um, kind of amazing that what we're doing is looking at cat videos, right? Um, anyway, so we're going to be talking about social media specifically as it relates to uh, the mobile age. Um, first thing we're going to talk about specifically is what is social? If anybody had to take a guess, what do you think social is as it relates to social media? It used to be rubbing shoulders together. It, it used to be networking and rubbing shoulders. Yeah, what, what were you saying? Sir? Networking. And, and here's the thing, we are rubbing shoulders and we are networking and we are talking to people. Um, there is sort of this disconnect a little bit because we're not doing it in person anymore. We're using the internet to do it. Um, but at a typical networking event, we might, might develop a good relationship with two people, yeah. right? We have the opportunity on mobile to develop relationships with not two people, not even a hundred people. As a matter of fact, somebody gets 50 likes on a photo and they're like, oh man, I only got 50 likes. That is 50 people that engage with content that you have online. You think about that. Let's fill this room for a second. We've got less than 50 people sitting in here today, right? If each and every one of you liked my photo here, I'd be like, wow, this is great. Um, this, for some reason, online doesn't have that same effect, right? But, but think about that for a moment. We are engaging with many more people online today than we were when we were rubbing shoulders. And by the way, I do not believe personally that it replaces that. As a millennial myself, as somebody who grew up with the internet, I still very much enjoy shaking hands and talking to people in person. So I don't think it's a substitution, but it's a very nice addition to that. What else is, is social? Sorry? Community. Community. Absolutely. 100%. Um, my wife, uh, she is in this uh, athletic community, right? Um, you want to know something really amazing about that? Again, there's nothing wrong with the group of people that hang out in the city in which they live and they go work out together and all of that stuff. But on any given day, they have this thing that they log into and she uses her iPad and works out in this virtual gym, is what they call it. And there are about a hundred people uh, on that thing whenever she logs in. And she logs in a different time of the day, it's a hundred different people all together. Um, and what's really cool about that is that there is this massive community that you can build online with people who care about a lot of the same stuff that you care about. Now that's not to say that she's friends with those hundred people, of course. Um, but a lot of her relationships that she's built, as a matter of fact, one of the people she talks to every single week lives in Texas and happened because of social media online through this digital community that reduces those boundaries that we usually experience when we talk to location, right? What else is social? Facebook? <laughs> yes, certainly. So we have our platforms like Facebook and Instagram and some of these other places. And, and what are the commonalities behind some of these platforms? What are some of those things that are integrated in there that are kind of shared between all of them? Easy. They're easy to use. They're intuitive, yes. What else? I'll give you a hint. You post a picture. What's underneath that picture? Captions. Captions. What's underneath the caption that you left there? Comments. Comments, right? Um, engagement, specifically. Conversations. 
engagement conversations is social. If you guys walk away with nothing else from this session, know that this is the one most important thing about social media. If you search the term social selling, it's out there and people are talking about it. But social is not selling. Social is not posting a picture of the latest product that you have. That's not to say you can't do that. But social is engagement. That is the purpose of social media, right? It's connections, it's the people that you're talking about. It's not this. Sales is the eventual goal of everything that we do as a business. But it is 100% not sales, right? Social is networking. As a matter of fact, social is social, right? Social is social. I mean, think about what we're doing on there, right? We go out and grab drinks with a friend. Um, in the same way, we can do a lot of that same stuff online. We use emojis. We use all of these, you know, gifts, and we send pictures and videos and all. That. I, my family lives in Miami, and if I was born, you know, 60 years ago, uh, I wouldn't know my family as well as I do today, right? I was born in Miami. I moved up here to Orlando. I see them all the time. My grand, my my, my parents get to see their grandkids frequently. And that is an amazing part of social media. Social media is social. So if, if it's social, if it's networking, if it's not sales, then why are we talking about this, right? Because this is what we all want to know, right? How do we monetize social then, right? There's this thing called the sales funnel. Has anybody ever heard of the sales funnel mm -hmm. in here? All right, great. We're going to learn something new today. This is a sales funnel. By the way, speaking of gradient visuals, notice anything about this versus a standard graphic? It's got the same colors we use, our typography, our little illustrations, so keep that in mind. Um, here's the sales funnel. Sales funnel basically says that nobody, nobody can do business with you unless they are aware of you. Think about that, right? Nobody can do business with you unless they're aware of you. But notice this, and this is really important. Awareness is way up here. And if I was to take this customer journey and put it down on this floor, I could walk a very long way before I get from awareness all the way to action or whatever it is that I want them to do. And this answers the question, how do we monetize social? See, social can be split up through these two different areas. There's marketing, which is a portion of the sales funnel, and then there's actually sales. Now, marketing does not sell anything. What marketing does is it makes people aware of who you are, what you do, what products you offer, what value you offer to them. It gets them interested in whatever it is that you have to offer, and then they convert from marketing over to sales. Sales is where they start looking at comparisons. Right, so they're comparing the different options that you have. They're comparing your reviews online, right? We've talked about, uh, we're gonna talk about reviews a bit tomorrow if you're here tomorrow. Um, they, they start looking at that sort of stuff. They start looking at other companies. And one of the decisions, and, and hear this very clearly, one of the decision-making factors is not whether this product is better than this product or your company is better than a different company. One of the decisions they can make is, I don't want to do business with anyone. Convince them that not only are you the best, but that they need this in the first place, right? Then, and only then, do they commit to an actual action where they sign up for something on a subscription, or they call you, or they look, they're looking for more information, or they buy something from you. So let's play this out real quick. Um, let's say that, um, Actually, somebody give me a business type here real quick. Any business type, doesn't matter. Dentist. Dentist. Okay, great. So, I don't have any pain in my teeth. Uh, I haven't been to the dentist in three years. Uh, I know that my insurance plan covers cleanings every six months, and somebody just got a cleaning, and, and I thought, maybe I should go do this, <laughs> right? Um, and, so, and so I start looking around, I find a website, and I see that somebody's delivering an ad. And it says, uh, top rated dentist, uh, get your 
get, get your, teen, uh, your teeth clean uh, in less than an hour's wait and uh, fast, easy, simple, Orlando, Florida. That sounds like everything that I want, that's great. So I am now aware of that specific company or that specific website or whatever it is. I click on the website, I learn a little bit more, I get more information and I decide to leave. Have you guys ever clicked on an ad, clicked on something, you decide to leave, you decide, eh, maybe it's not time, right? Introduce social. Guess what I just did? I searched something. How many people have searched something and then it follows you everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Those are called cookies. Uh, they sit on the back end and they watch your every movement so that they can track you and deliver relevant stuff to you. So I've got, Let's go to the other side. I'm now not the customer, I'm the business owner. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a doctor, at least everyone makes fun of me because I'm a dentist and they think I'm a doctor, but I'm not. Anyway, uh, I am a doctor, but they, anyway. Um, so I'm a dentist and uh, I decide, hey, you know what, I'm gonna invest in social media a little bit. So I get some of my staff to start taking um, pictures of some of the x-rays with people's permissions, of course. Uh, I start getting people to take pictures of toothbrushes and more importantly, I start telling them, hey guys, don't just take pictures of this stuff, teach them things. Show them that if you buy a really hard bristle brush, it may actually uh, bring your gum line up, right? And give you gum disease. Show them that the soft bristle, even though it feels like it's doing nothing, uh, is actually the best way to go. Talk to them about the best toothpaste. Talk to them about the fact that those toothpaste that say extra whitening are really bad for you because they sand your teeth down and they eventually turn your teeth yellow and then you can't go back, right? Tell them all of these cool things. So I'm browsing, and again, the internet's following me, and I come across something on Instagram. It's not an app. It is a social media piece of content with a video talking about these toothbrushes or the toothpaste or whatever it is. So I stop for a second. Remember, six, sec six seconds of attention span, right? So, by the way, to clear things up, that doesn't mean that people only browse for six seconds. That's the amount of time you have to catch my attention. I may stay a lot longer, but that's the amount of time you have to catch my attention. So I see this and I go, huh, this is really interesting. And so I start watching the video um, and I learn new things. I go, I've never heard that before. That's really cool. And I notice that it's a dentist, as a matter of fact, the same dentist whose ad I clicked on previously. It didn't work the first time. I clicked on the ad, they spent the money to get me to their website, it didn't work. But now I see something really, really helpful, something that's a utility to my life. And so I decide, now's the time, right? So I, I look again on their website. Here's the crazy thing about this, guys. Just because I become aware of something doesn't mean that I stay aware of something. When's the last time that you thought about the Gerber brand? Hmm. When's the last time you guys thought about it? Just now. Just now, but before this, when's the last time you thought about it? Think about it. Been a, Been a while, probably for a lot of you guys, right? Years, maybe. But it, I mean, you know what Gerber is, right? But it, you weren't necessarily aware of the fact that Gerber even still existed. And that's really important. That's really important to note that just because somebody is aware of your brand doesn't mean that they stay aware of your brand. Doesn't mean that just because somebody clicks on your ad that they remember your company. They don't. Because not only do we have a six second attention span, we only retain so much. And with everything going on around us, we have forgotten about that ad. 30 seconds after we left the website, right? So we've now become re-aware of this company. And because of that content that they posted, I now become interested. Here's the cool thing, guys. At this point, social media might be done, right? I could end up going to the, por to the profile, looking through and seeing other pieces of content and kind of stay in the awareness and education realm. But once I'm interested, I have left social media and I'm now on the website again. Or I'm now looking at, uh, uh, or I'm now looking at a location where they actually sit to see how far they are and all that. And eventually, I move from marketing over to sales, right? So we talked about this a little bit: awareness and interest. Social media sits here, where sales is something completely, completely different. So I call the dentist. One of two things might happen: I call the dentist. They say, "Oh man, we're so booked up. We don't have anything available for two months. Sales is dead." Didn't mean the social media didn't work. 
It worked. I called, right? And I started deciding whether I was going to go because they had such a long wait time, I decided not to. And so, but in this case, they're good, they're good business owners. So they, they know what they can support and they make sure not to overbook themselves, uh, but they have a lot of availability and so they have something for me next week. And so I go in uh, and here's what's really cool. I have a great experience with that dentist. What do you think I talked to my friends about after leaving that dentist's office? I talk about the dentist, but more specifically, what else do you think I talk about? Your impression. My impression, yeah. And my impression, not just there, but what happened before I got there that I was really impressed with? Social media. Yeah, social media. Do you guys see how social media is not selling? Do you guys see how they engaged with me? They showed me something that was really useful to my life. I may have even left a comment there, right? And what I do is when I, when I talk to my friend, I don't tell them about the place. I don't tell them to go look at the reviews. In this case, because of the way that I became aware of this brand, I actually start talking to them about social and I share maybe a post with them on social. What questions do you guys have about how this customer journey works and how marketing is very, very different from the sales side? What questions do you guys have about that? Have you guys now had a different perception of social and how to use that? What are some things that we, we should not post on social now thinking about this journey that I brought you through? <laughs> yes, don't post that. <laughs> what else? Sorry? Yeah, and by the way, it's not to say that you can't post the products, but if you're having a flash sale and you post the products and you're like, look at this product, we are amazing. Will that work on social? Probably not. What else should we post on there? Experiences. Sorry? Experiences. How so? What do you mean? Like when, you, when someone has used, either in the process of using your product or... Uh, yeah. Tested, tested your product? Yeah, so you're, the question you're answering is what's good to post on yes. there? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm sorry, the question I was asking is what, is, what, is, what should we not post on there? But, but you are 100% correct. Yes, experiences we definitely want to post online. By the way, there's something called uh, UGC, which is User Generated Content. User Generated Content is amazing. It's other people posting about your brand. Repost their stuff. <laughs> That's free content that you get to use and they'll be happy that you did it, right? So yes, that's great. What should we not post on social? So just blatantly putting out our products, what else? Minutia. Minutia, yeah. Think about relevancy, right? So we have a picture of a beautiful mountain with snow, a plumbing company. Should we post that picture on social? Probably not, right? It's not relevant. It's a nice picture, but nobody cares about it. So let's talk about what does work, right? What do you guys think works? What should we post online? On social? Positive feedback. Positive feedback, okay, so if somebody said something really good about you, um, then yes, you can post a quote from that. Sure, what else? Teach them information. Teach them information. That's, honestly, it's one of the best things that you can post online. A lot of people's YouTube channels have exploded, and I'll show you an example of that in a little bit. But yeah, definitely. Uh, that, by the way, write down this term. It's very important. It's called content marketing. Content marketing is using content to market to people. What you're doing is you're building trust with them. You're not asking them for a sale. You're showing them that you are a trusted resource. And again, I'll show you an example of that in a little bit. Um, what else? What else can we post? Maybe exciting events that will draw them in, draw their attention to something coming up in the future? Sure. Yeah. So, fire inspector walked out on your business, you got a free workshop. And you can learn all about the things not to do. Won't charge you anything for it. Come on by. We'll get you educated on all the things to make sure that never happens again. That's an interesting event. That's something people would go to. Sure. Definitely. So let's talk about a few different things here, guys. What works? First of all, influencers work. How many people know this term? This is a pretty new term in the marketing world. 
Would you mind explaining what you know of influencers? It would be somebody, well obviously if there's a market you're catering to, somebody who's known in that market, somebody who already has a following that can basically spread the word about you. That's right. So if you happen to know somebody who has a big following already, or, and by the way, this is a, a, an, ad, uh, an ad avenue that you can use. Many times you can contact these people that have a massive amount of followers and say, hey, I have this, this video with some really good content I think your followers would really like. Can I pay you 50 bucks to post it on your feed, right? Some of the cheapest and most effective advertising you can do out there. Now, one of the other things you can do is you can actually become one of these influencers. It is much easier said than done, but if you invest time in posting really good quality content, photos, videos, it doesn't matter, things that people really, really like, your follower count can easily jump from 50 to several thousand, almost overnight. I'm gonna give you an example here. Um, we work with a yoga institution, and uh, a lot of the stuff that the owner was posting online, we weren't working with them on social, we working with them on some other stuff, but um, a lot of the stuff that the owner was posting online was focused on the classes and the products and the courses. And, you know, it was not doing poorly. We were trying to guide her along the way, and ultimately it was just what she had available. But then she decided, you know what? I'm gonna stop all of this. I'm going to post as myself, introduce who I am, introduce what I care about, and just start talking about what I genuinely care about. See if anybody out there cares about it as well. I'm not, by the way, marketers are great liars, and I promise you this is 100% not a fabrication, okay? Um, her follower count grew from 300, and it's just over 11,000 now in one month. In one month. Just because she invested time in talking about what she really cared about and showing other people that they can talk about what they care about as well. So you too can become an influencer. It's really not that far away if you put the time and effort into it. One of the other things you can do is ask questions. By the way, this falls flat if you have 14 followers. <laughs> so don't ask questions if you only have 14 followers. But, but if you do have several followers, several hundred followers even, it may be a good idea to ask questions. Hey guys, we were at this uh, conference the other day and we saw these two products, they both looked really interesting. What do you guys think? That's great, you're literally asking for engagement, right? The entire purpose of social media. Get people to engage with your brand by asking questions. Also, remember it's a two-way conversation. If somebody says something, respond to them. Responding teaches people that when they communicate and when they engage with you, that you care enough to engage back with them. That they're not just the little peon. That they're not just the little person on the other end that, that doesn't matter. But that they're someone that matters to your brand. Now, obviously, if you have 11,000 followers, it can be very difficult to do that. But responding to even every few different comments uh, shows your audience that you are reading through, you are listening, and you care about what they're, what they're saying. Yes? Are you saying, what avenue was she using? Was she using like YouTube or Facebook She was using or? Instagram specifically. Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. Which by the way, from a social media perspective, Instagram is, is probably the top uh, social channel at this moment um, that's like very mobile friendly. Um, and depending on the channel, or depending on the audience or target market that you're looking at, uh, YouTube is also one of the top as well. As a matter of fact, um, the top search engine in the world is Google. The third largest search engine in the world is YouTube. <laughs> they, they use it as a search engine. That's how, many, that's how much volume is on there. The other thing you do is follow and like other people. If you want people to follow you and like you, you need to do the same. Go and find other interesting profiles that you really like. Follow them, engage on their stuff. Let them know that you care about the content they're posting as well. Right? In order for you to really play well in that area, you have to show that you're part of the community and that you're willing to give and not just receive. So follow and like other people's content. Comment on it if it means something to you. And then content marketing. We talked about this very briefly. Content marketing is putting out content that's very, very important to your target market. Guys, here's the thing. We were all told that when we went into business, that we need to keep our business private. Our business is our business. 
Our processes are our processes. The things that we develop are ours. And if somebody else gets wind of it, we're going to go out of business. How many of us have heard that before? It's a lie. And here's why. It didn't used to be. It's a lie now, though, because nothing is secret anymore. If you haven't shared it, somebody else has. It's already out there. And so understanding that you don't have proprietary information anymore, it's very important that you share your process, that you talk about it, that you tell people what you do. It's why we love doing conferences like this. It's why we love posting on, on, on Instagram and YouTube. It's why we love talking about this stuff because we get to share the valuable information that we have available. And honestly, maybe none of you will do business with us. And that's okay, right? That's, that's okay because what we're doing right now on our end, right, on the Red Fork end, why am I here today? I want to support each and every one of you, of course, but in addition to that, there is a shared interest. All of you guys are at the top of my sales funnel, right? You're all in awareness of Red Fork right now. And even if you don't do business with us, I hope that we're building trust with each and every one of you so that you recommend us if you don't do business with us. And, and that's what you're doing when you, when, you, when you focus on content marketing. You're publishing videos, you're publishing content, you're publishing information that is useful to somebody else. And honestly, you can show somebody everything from start to bottom. What's really gonna happen is they're gonna go, I can't do that. Hey, <laughs> I see that you can do this thing really well. Can you do it for me too? Oh, absolutely. Here's an example of that. Dan, I'm gonna use you as an example. Is that okay? <laughs> so, this violates, in my opinion, <coughs> every rule of design, every rule of what a good logo looks like. That apple looks like somebody sat on it. You can't read the website very well. Um, but remember when I said at the very beginning of our last conversation that a good website is not good design, it's really good strategy. And again, I'm not saying that's not important. This guy's strategy is to focus on delivering as much useful information as he possibly can. So for instance, DIY French drain project. That doesn't make sense. Why would he want to show people how to DIY their own French drain project if he actually does the drain projects himself? That doesn't make sense. Why in the world would I show other people how to do it? I want that business. If anything, maybe I give him a little teaser and I'm like, ha ha, gotcha, give me a call, right? No. Here's what happened. French Strain DIY How To. He posts that video online. Maybe 90% of the people that watch that video don't call this guy. Or maybe he's not even in the area. But guess who did watch that video? Uh, my business partner, Dan, got a new house. Congratulations. <laughs> um, there was an issue where a portion of the yard was flooding significantly. And so Dan says, let me see if I can do this by myself. And so he starts to look at videos sees this channel. Uh, this guy is local, actually, uh, in Orlando. And so he pulls up this video and he goes, there is not a chance <laughs> that you're gonna catch me doing all this work. Who do you think he called? Apple Do you think he did any more research after this at all? Do you think that he went to other people's social channels, looked at other videos? To do you think any of that happened? No. Not at all. As a matter of fact, Dan picked up the phone, said, hey, I watched your videos. They're really cool. Can you do that? And he goes, yeah, absolutely. And this gentleman, and I promise you again, we're great liars, but at the end of the day, I promise this is real. Um, this, this gentleman did earn Dan's business simply by posting his video. Less than I the job of a platform is to keep you engaged. If you find enough content that you don't care about, like people who after a fire safety convention did not listen to me and went immediately to social media and started posting their products, right? Um, if you see that in your news feed and it's not engaging and you don't care, you'll stop using the platform. Well, they can't have that, right? YouTube can't not show their ads to anyone. Facebook and Instagram, they have ads as well. They rely on the fact that you are engaging online. Here's a crazy statistic. Um, out of 10 seconds spent online, so 10 second increments, how many of those seconds are spent on Facebook in general? Yeah. <laughs> 10, no. We, we, do, we do actually go to other websites, believe it or not. <laughs> so out of 10 seconds spent online as an average, how many are spent on Facebook? In, in average, there's uh, um, billions of websites, right? Five. Five? 
That's a very good guess. Six seconds. So six seconds, 60% of the website traffic is on Facebook. So they've done it. <laughs> they have found good engagement. And the way that they do that is through curation. I'll show you what that means in just a little bit. Um, let's talk about the news feed real quick. The news feed is that specific portion that you scroll through, right? That shows you up-to-date content. Um, some people do it differently. Instagram and Facebook are kind of the same. Whereas YouTube, instead, you go to the homepage and you scroll through and you see videos that are kind of like recommended to you, right? That is a feed. Um, LinkedIn has that as well. I mean, in, in many ways, the basis of a social media platform is that feed that you see. And that feed is customized. Here's how we know. I blacked out the names here, right? This is Instagram. Um, there's this post that I see from 20 hours ago, right? But then all of a sudden down here, there's a post from five hours ago. How is that possible? It's not chronological. It doesn't make any sense. Has anybody ever noticed that? That you see something that's like, like really, really old from three days ago, but then the next thing you see was posted five minutes ago? Mm -hmm. Anybody notice that? Yeah. Why do you think that happens? So here's what's really cool. And again, we're thinking from a marketing perspective. Uh, from a consumer perspective, it's, it's very, very creepy. Uh, there's Big Brother for sure. But um, here's what's happening. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, they all do it. They're tracking the movements and the engagement that you have on their profile. So if you are scrolling and you pause on a photo and then you keep going, Facebook knows, or Instagram or YouTube or whoever, they know that that was pretty interesting to you but not interesting enough. So they'll show something to you by that user again, but not as much of a, as a photo that you tap on, that you like. Not as much of a, as a photo that you, or a video that you leave comments on, especially one that you leave a lot of comments on and you start really engaging, right? So what they're doing is they're analyzing your behavior and for the sake of trying to keep you engaged on the platform, to put you in essentially a loop, <laughs> a rap loop, right? Um, what they're doing is they're prioritizing content in the order in which they think you would prefer to see it. So whenever you go to these platforms, you're like, man, every time I go on this platform, I really find the stuff that I really want to see. It's because they're curating that content specifically for you. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> and we live in a world that is curated for us, but that is based off of something called an algorithm. And when we post online, that's what we're fighting. We are fighting the algorithm. What we need to do, because again, you have to know, the point of social is social, and it's engagement, right? Because that's the point, when we post a, a, a picture of a fire hydrant, or a picture of a fire extinguisher, or a picture of this new safety equipment, and nobody sees it, and nobody likes it, and nobody comments it, and I don't understand what's going on, I've been posting every day for a month solid, and it doesn't matter what I do, I post on Facebook, I post on Instagram, I post on YouTube, Nobody cares, it doesn't matter how many times I do it, I have 14,000 followers and I don't understand why anybody's not seeing my content. That's why it's happening. Because when they have shown your content, the few times that they have shown it to somebody, they haven't engaged. And they're telling Facebook inadvertently, this content is interesting to me. I don't care about this content. And Facebook learns that and learns that other users won't find it important either. So, there's a valuable lesson here. The valuable lesson is that when you post something, think, if I was on the other side, would I engage with this? Would I really like to see this? Would I comment? Is it interesting? Will I watch the entire video or will I watch it for two seconds and then leave? Does anybody have any questions about curation and the algorithm and how that works on social? No? Yeah? All right. So I want to introduce a new-ish feature this new-ish feature is called Stories. Does anybody know about Stories and how this works? No? If you open up Instagram, you have the news feed. If you open up Facebook, you have the news feed. But right above that, you have all these little circles. Has anybody seen that before? Little circles on the top? Those little circles are called Stories. Facebook, Instagram has found that those stories are significantly more effective than the news feed. And so they put it at the top. And many times people open up Instagram and they never actually scroll through the feed. All they do is watch stories. And they look a little something like this. When you tap on it, um, it shows you 
whatever it is that they posted and it goes through like these little phases and you can post as many things as you want, right? Um, but remember, you're fighting the algorithm. Facebook is, and Instagram is looking to see if you actually watch the content, if your users are actually watching it. And so that's sort of what it looks like and you can send a message and you can respond and you can do all of that stuff. Do you guys mind? Real quick, if I just give you a live demonstration as to how this works. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Dan, can you help me out with this? Sure. So I can't really show it, and I know it's kind of far. This is Redfork's Instagram. This is the one we're on right now, and you can see, as Dave said, the stories right above. I can see it from Disney, I can see it from a local marketing company, a local blog, and this is our stories. We're gonna add one to our stories right now, if you guys don't mind. I'm just gonna take a quick video. You guys can clap, shout, get loud, do whatever you want. Uh, we can do it together. So we'll just wave at the camera. In three, two, one. Woo! Hello! <laughs> and that's it. I have my video. I can now add some filters, some text. I can even put my location. And that uh, adds the volume of where I'm going to be seen and how I'm going to be seen and who I'm going to be seen. That's it. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. There's some great tools to make sure that you guys are, are on mark. Some of those tools you can schedule posts in advance, so if you know that every single day you just don't have the time to sit there and take pictures, you can schedule things. Um, there's analytics tools so you can see exactly what's happening. Are people watching your old video all the way? Are people actually engaging? How many likes did you get this month? There's an inbox feature on Facebook, by the way. Facebook owns Instagram. Uh, that's why those platforms look so similar. Uh, so there is a Facebook inbox where you can see both your Facebook and Instagram messages and comments all in one spot. There is something called Business Manager, and this is specific to Facebook as well, where you can put all your business pages and profiles on there and manage them in one place. And you can even log into multiple accounts uh, through one app. So for instance, on Instagram, I'll show you that one as an example since we're talking about that so much. Uh, down here at the bottom right, so I'm logged into the uh, Facebook, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Red Fork channel right now. If I hold down my finger, you'll notice this uh, list comes up and these are some of the other Instagram accounts that I'm currently logged into so don't worry you don't have to log out of your personal Instagram if you do use it quite a bit you can log into multiple at the same time just some quick ways to get started first thing you want to do as always start on strategy come up with objectives now this is our strategy brief so we use a term called blocks but come up with objectives what do you want to happen uh, based on your social media postings right and these are the four questions that you want to ask. What is it that we're doing on these platforms? Why are we doing it? Who are we targeting? And then what do we eventually want them to do? Those four questions can help you think about the content that you're gonna post from a strategy perspective. Think about categories. Categories can help you figure out what are the types of content that you should be posting about. So cats do really well online, but they may not necessarily for a fire safety account, right? Um, so think about the categories you want to post in and then build a calendar where you can actually see all of your stuff in motion. Um, that will give you a good sense of what the entire month looks like and it'll help you figure out what to post online preemptively. It doesn't take very long to put a calendar together and I'll share something at the end uh, that will help you a little bit with this as well. Again, as always, there's three options. If you need help outside of the work that you guys are doing, you can work with a freelancer to help you with some of this stuff. You can work with an agency, you can work with a staff member. By the way, just because a staff member has a good Instagram account, doesn't mean they're good at Instagram, <laughs> especially for business. And then these are the questions that you wanna to ask to make sure that you are getting the most out of your social experience. I went long. Surprise. Uh, what questions do we have about this topic, guys? Was this helpful? Yes. Yeah. Great. Um, we've got a free gift for you if you want it. You certainly don't have to. Um, at the end of this, if you would like a free content calendar, um, it, I will say it does sign up for our mailing list, so expect to receive some nice, really friendly, utility helpful content from us. Um, but if you would like to get a free content calendar from us, we have an iPad here. You can come up at the very end, fill out your information, and we'll send you a free content calendar so you can get started on this. Okay? All right, guys. Thank you so much. I very much appreciate it.